Welcome back. This is Soph. This is Rich. And we are from across the pond. The pond. What's going on, Soph? Hello, my love. Made it to another week. Made it to another week, and I made it to another goddamn year. Hmm. Yeah! Happy birthday to you. It's over, but happy you know. birthday to you. So what's yeah. going on? How was your week? I didn't even get the full song. Bloody hell. Mm. Uh, <laughs> the week was good. I had a birthday. Um, had a lovely lunch with my um, best friend. That was very mm -hmm. nice. Had a few mm -hmm. gifts. Um, weather's taken a total rain on gray is uh you ain't, you ain't but i can't wait till we get to your end because everyone's dying to hear about your shit storm or should i say snowstorm but pause that till it's your turn uh yeah weather's <laughs> let's not beat around the bush right the news the main and uh, i know only topic is corona right but it is such an absolute shit show right basically is all i can say last week when they put the country back into lockdown i was in tier two which meant you could still go about your business as long as you wore a mask um you could meet up with six people blah blah, blah you know as of tomorrow cut i'm now in tier three which means that's even worse you can't see anybody else you know only go out if you need to go to work don't go to work go out don't go out but He's still saying, as much as the whole of the country is going to be in tier three, I'm going to give you five days off for Christmas. Even though there was a scientist on the news the other day saying, we do not recommend that he does this. Keep you in tier three, keep everyone safe, blah, 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 blah. He's like, nope, <laughs> if I wait for it, for five days, you can see your family for Christmas. But if I was you, I wouldn't go out. So you can see your family, but don't see your family. Because if you do see your family, we're going to put you on strict lockdown. I'm telling you, that's what's going to happen. People are going to go and see their families, have a jolly, holly, merry Christmas, mistletoe and wine, whatever it is Cliff Richard sings about. And um, then he's going to say, bam, I told you not to go, even though I let you go. So now that's it. <laughs> mm. That sounds a so confusing much Confusing like as hell, that. right? Yeah, that sounds like a cluster. Of, of anxiety and depression and <laughs> just a ball of mess. I think he should just lock it down tight. And I know that sounds mean for people who are on their own. You know, like we talked about this in the last show, depression and blah, blah, blah. But I'm going to be on my own, you know, and I'm not saying so if I do it tough shit, everyone else can do it. I don't mean that. But you've got to think about the long term rather than just a short term. Why are you thinking about five days? Why don't you think about what's going to happen over the next five months? Do you know what I mean? Yeah. And it just, even on the news this morning, they said he, they're just not giving all the facts. That's what the main big problem is. Mm. Interesting. But what do we know? We just live here. But yeah, yeah. that's the only real thing in the news. Corona, Corona. Um, <laughs> yeah that's it and i've had a birthday and the week's just as it is cheers your news your week all right um let's see here we had our first winter storm oh you did i know that last time you was praying please can we get snow that so you don't have to go work and i end up still having to go to work <laughs> still having to go to work you haven't had any the time the first off day yeah, the first day, like the actual, when the snow was falling, right? Because uh, I work second shift. So the first shift, they they closed down shop at noon. So that means I didn't have to go to work, which was, which was great. Um, the second day, which was yesterday, uh, the morning shift got off. Like they didn't have to report to work. So I'm sitting here going to myself, well, I have to, I can just lay in here and I don't have to shovel. I can just uh, drink coffee and relax. No, I called the hotline because you got to call the weather hotline. And man, they were like, 
second shift report to work. And I said, what? So I had to go out and get my shovel on. And I kid you not, I woke up this morning and I said, Lord Jesus, help me. Cause <laughs> I hurt so bad. <laughs> I've, there's muscles hurting on me right now that I haven't felt since like basic training. <laughs> it's, it's painful, but. So basically what you're saying is you need a good rub down. No, no, I, I took an Epsom salt bath last night because then I had to go to work. Okay. And you know what the good thing about work was is that there was hardly nobody there. So I, you know, I mean, I did my job due diligence, but um, it really wasn't a lot of work. So I'm planning on today to be a busy one because now everybody's coming back to work today. So I'm planning on today to be a really busy day so after that first just, initial flurry you've had no more snow since then oh no but guess what we got snow in the forecast for sunday we got snow in the, and this might we might end up having snow on christmas what? i'm a dreaming of a white christmas get in <laughs> but um and what's going on in the news yeah that was about it. That was like the first snowstorm of the year. Last year, we got like a sprinkle of snow and then that was it. And then I got my snow blower out and it worked for five minutes. So that means- Okay, when you I say snow blower, gonna... is that like a leaf blower? Like it's got a pipe and it just blows? What are we talking? How does it work? Well, a snow blower is like this <coughs> little, well, mine's is an antique. I got it for nothing, but it's an antique. So what happens is it shovels the snow in and then it shoots it off to the side. Shoots it, oh, shoots it off to the side, or just literally slings it, throws it? Yeah, it slings it off to like, if you're going down your sidewalk, you can sling it off into like- So basically, your if your neighbors- Your were front really, garden. If your neighbors were really annoying you, you could go down the side of your house and chuck the, shit, uh, the snow, sorry, on their side? Well, no, because your sidewalk is on your side. Oh. So you want to do your property. Now, me, la the year before, I shoveled the whole sidewalk because I was all happy with my little snowblower. Because I'm from the city. We ain't had snowblowers when we were coming up. It was a shovel and a cup where you just poured salt. Well, and, and so this year, I was like, oh, okay, we didn't get any snow last year. Got a little sprinkle, it melted. Good. This year we got all this snow. I'm like, all right. I broke out my little snow blower. It worked for a minute, a total of five minutes, and it just broke down. So then guess what? I was in my, I was in my so they call it soldier mode. I was in there shoveling my tail away. I was like, Ugh. did you have one of those big shovels like that work. guy on Home Alone? Yeah. Uh-huh. Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Home, home alone. Home, home alone. Anyway, in the news, let's talk about the news here. Um, so tell us, the president is being a plum again. We ain't even gonna talk about him this morning. We're gonna talk about our. We're gonna talk about our president elect. Biden did a speech that was really, really wonderful. Go on, Joe. And uh, I was, even though like he had so much phlegm in his throat that I thought like he needed a like spit bucket. Cause like he was really, the speech was nice, but then he kept going, oh, oh. and I was just like, get it out. Like I, I was more, I was more like this, get it out, man, get it out. Just do one of these and just, I know he wanted to spit that right on the stage. It's like, <clears throat> But um, Gross. the speech was really good. He just talked about unifying the country. That's all. And making America strong. And making America what great it again. Was. It was, no, no, it wasn't. It wasn't nothing like that. Um, and then uh, our governor last, was it last Friday? He put out that um, all restaurants gyms and bars were to shut down and you can't dine in so has that happened now because you mentioned that last week so has that happened now 
Uh, yeah, that's happened. But I'm gonna tell you right now, we got some folks that ain't listening. Oh. So gyms have reopened some restaurants. There was a list that came out that had like a list of restaurants that were saying, um, the answer is no. We are going to stay open. It's the holiday. We have employees that got families and stuff to take care of. Now, I did go out to eat. I didn't even go in front. I'm a rebel. I went out to eat. But the owner told me that was something special that um, he had somebody donate money to his restaurant and his employees for, I think, up to six months. Someone just gave him a donation so that he can take care of his employees and okay. himself and his business. So he stayed open. He was on the news and everything. I thought that was really sweet. Well, I mean, I know holidays. you said you're a rule breaker. Was it busy when you went in there? Are other people going in there to eat? <laughs> well, to be honest, to be honest, uh, I I ate outside. So, I mean, it wasn't like we were dining in. Oh, okay. It was just, you know. And to me, it makes no sense. If you if you if you can't dine out, like dine inside the restaurant, and they're making it accessible for you to dine out, which is dope. <laughs> I was just driving down the street, and they had um, they this one restaurant had domes over the outside tables, mm -hmm. like your own personal dome, like a like a giant umbrella that yeah, we've came got to some the of them here. They look really nice. Yeah, I seen them. I was like, yo, now that's now that's inventive. Mm -hmm. But then if, I feel bad for people who are claustrophobic. Well, I don't think you'd go if you was claustrophobic, would you? But yes, uh, yeah, we ain't even going to talk about Trump right now. And then we have, they have rolled out the vaccine, though. And now they have another company coming out with a vaccine. And don't you think that's weird another... that all of these random companies keep coming out of the woodwork with this vaccine that they can do it cheaper I, I don't really think they're doing it cheaper but my thing is okay is this shot gonna eventually somebody's gonna have to pay for this so I'm trying to figure out is uh they giving them out free and my biggest thing is like I'm I'm, I'm eventually gonna take it I just don't want to be the first mm. the first wave like they call they call these they call these pandemics you no know, they call the corona like you got wave two this is the second wave this is the fourth wave and I'm gonna be honest with you it is scary though because I've had some friends who've lost parents before the holiday on uh, my condolences to um, some of my friends who lost their one of my friends that I went to school with lost her father um. And that's a tragedy. Mm. Uh, I've had relatives, a sister included, nieces, um, nephews who have had corona. My neighbor, she had corona. She was said she said a couple of days there. She thought she wasn't going to make it, but she refused to go to the hospital. So I mean, it's starting to hit close to home, and it's it's sad that. Um, we had super spreaders out here, you know, throwing rallies and stuff like that, but it happens. Um, well, so the vaccine- them, He's been zipping here, there and everywhere in the world doing this EU bloody deal, getting on and off planes without a mask on. First time I saw him the other day with a mask on when he was leaving his 10 Downing Street, there's pictures of him everywhere getting on and off planes with no mask. I was like, hey, hey I ain't even gonna front from uh, our Twitter page. I even retweeted the picture and said, yo, no mask, I see. Our name mm -hmm. and shame him. Yeah, I'm going to give it to the new president-elect. He's saying that he's not going to make a mandate for us to wear a mask, but he does wear a mask. He's encouraging everyone to wear a mask. And I think once he gets in office, like once the whole changing of the guard is, I think he is going to make it mandatory. Now, I don't know if y'all have this, but we have a lot of families who are now under the poverty level mm -hmm. and we have a lot of businesses that are closing and they're not reopening so uh congress right now is going back and forth about a relief package for 
you know, the less fortunate small businesses and so on and so forth. So I'm hoping that that goes in effect because I think um, either the first of the year or after Christmas, the people that they had this unemployment thing for them is going to run out. So then what are they going to do? Mm. So that's, that's another thing. That is, so but before we go on to our topic, I think that here, live on air, me and you need to make a pact, right? Because neither of us want the vaccine. Neither of us definitely are going to be at the front of the queue. We both have the same theory, thought process about Corona. So when it comes to our time, if we have to have it, I think we need to have it at the same time. Well, then I'm we going to tell just, you right now. Then we can just grow two heads together because let's be fair, neither of us are doing the show without the other person right so if there's going to be side effects right. we may as well just do it together yeah if this big forehead of mine opens up and it's what, a like third Asian? eye <laughs> I'll be we like, could be doing the show and be like that you know that's kind of sexy what if your forehead yeah. opens up now i have to i have to say i've been in the military i've taken i've taken loads of shots my shot records look like a resume but what i'm saying is i'm not saying that i'm not willing to take the shot i just don't want to be the first first well i know i'm not the first group but i don't want to be the second i hear third. you so what i'm saying is we're going to hold hands and do it together we're not leading i'm not leading you up the garden virtually path so that you can see what it is i'm not making you my guinea pig and vice versa we in this ride or die partner in crime if you get it i get okay, it okay now i'm gonna tell you whenever when okay so we're gonna make this pat that when it, when it's time to get the shot we're gonna get it done on the same day and then the next show we're gonna both be like here we'll both be we got people. our come shots on. people come on let's pinky swear it live <laughs> <laughs> that's probably you gotta do it that wrong way. size so i always get it wrong you gotta do it that way you okay gotta, you gotta do it that way. yes that's go. it you can't go back now we've locked can't in go back. You heard it here first, folks. We're getting stabbed up at the same time. Bop, bop. Yeah. Yeah. And we could really even be like Obama it. and record it and then play it back for the world to see that we actually did it. Who knows? Man, I ain't doing all that. Like the Come on, all the best all celebrities are doing it. Whatever happened, I just want to know whatever happened to the presidents and all of them talking about they were going to be the first ones to get the shot on live air. Didn't there happen. There you go. Oh, what about the queen? Did she get her shot? She's like 80 um, something. She said that, um, okay, so we I was the first person to mention about the queen in the last show, right? Why didn't she get it? Lo and behold, there's a talk show on called Loose Women Here Every Day, right? And what was the first thing they said on Monday last week? Oh, how come the queen's not getting her shot? They listened to our show, mate, and they took all the headlines from us because nobody mentioned the queen until after I mentioned the queen. So oh, everybody girl. watching this show... Just know you hear it here first. We are hot off the press. But anyway, yes, yes. apparently the reason yes. the Queen isn't taking it first is because she doesn't want to seem like she's queue jumping or taking advantage of the system. So she's going to wait a few weeks. Well, how is she, how is she, how is she jumping the line? She's damn near 90, ain't she? She, she fits the criteria. She should have been the first one to get a jab just in the neck. Just an excuse, an excuse. Right. Friday fun day. I'm done. Corona. Friday fun day. Friday. Check this out. We're going to take it back a little bit. Boop, boop, boop. And uh, we're going to talk about some old school show. I think we talked about cartoons. Mm -hmm. We talked about 80s television shows. Uh, we talked about food, different restaurants. But you know what we haven't talked about? Do tell, my love. Game shows. Because I'm going to tell you right now, when I was a kid, Yo, I watched me some game shows. Listen, Saturday night TV was the night for game shows. And I'm I'm not yeah, well, it was Saturday here. Saturday night. Yeah, Saturday night TV was game show night. What Man. night was it there? Oh, I can't I can't wait to hear this. What what, what game shows you were watching <laughs> on Saturday? What going on, on the Saturday night? Excuse oh me, that's not that's not the Rona. <laughs> I'm just trying to figure out. What game shows was you watching on a Saturday night? Oh my God, they had loads of game shows. They had some on during the week at like seven o'clock before the soap operas come on. But they always had one on a Saturday. Do you know what? They used to have a one called Bullseye, right? I don't know if you had it there. So it was a darts one. So people used to come in. You had to get so many like on a dartboard, blah, blah. 
I was obviously knee high to a grasshopper, but you could win things like a, a boat, you know, or a car, or I know. And I used to be like, whoa, I want to win a boat. I want to go on there. Yeah. On a Saturday night. Yeah, bullseye. I ain't mad at you. You never had bullseye there? Uh uh. But I used to be. <laughs> <laughs> on a Saturday I used... night. <laughs> Did you have it at all? I don't Why think you... so. I feel like you're mocking me. When were your game shows on then? Come on, do tell. I'm gonna say they were in the e some of them were in the evening, some of them were in the afternoon on a Saturday, like afternoon. American Gladiators. Do you ever watch American Gladiators? No, we had gladiators, not American gladiators. So maybe you copied it from us because we had gladiators. So then you took it. Well, it ain't like we ain't there. never done that before. But yes, American Gladiators was a joint that came on like Saturday afternoon. They ain't come on. Yeah, that night. was the evening for us. Saturday afternoon here used to be things like Little House on the Prairie or Black Beauty or whatever, stuff like that. And then game shows in the evening. <laughs> okay. Um, and hey, then. I didn't make the rules. Now they did have like nighttime shows like the newlywed game. Did y'all have that? No, what's that about? Newlywed game was kind of dope. They had like couples against other couples. And then the guy, you would, it'd be like the girls first. And then like, they would have these cue cards on their lap and the guy would ask them questions and like their spouse or their boyfriend, or I think it was husbands. They would ask them like certain questions that the woman would write down that they think their spouse would know. And then they would flip the card up and it'd be either right or wrong. And the, and the couple that had the most won. So what it'd be they like- win? Uh, they win? Oh, they would win like vacations and, and trips and vehicles and all, you know, traditional game show prizes. Yeah, like a holiday. Yeah. Oh man, that, that used to be funny because, you know, you with this person and like, you don't know, you don't know him that well. That shiggity used to be fun. That could make or break a relationship, you know? You know, you know, I think it, that, I think they kind of made it kind of lighthearted. I don't know. I was a young buck when it first came out, but that was the show for me. I liked it. The newlywed game. Cause it'd be like, uh, you know, um, what do you think? her favorite color is and you know I'm, I'm trying I'm just making it easy and like the card be face down and they'd be like oh the dude be like oh I know that it's purple yeah no problem and she'd be like red dummy <laughs> hitting with the cue card it was funny um and what we other did, we did have one when when I was younger called you bet where basically <laughs> let's just say I was really good at something like I've got a really good memory and if I just heard the first 10 bars of a track, I could tell you what it is, you know, artist and title. So I would rock up there. Matthew Kelly was the host. And he'd be like, oh, Soph's here. She's told us that she could name 20 Madonna songs just by hearing the first 10 bars. Are we ready? Do we think she's going to do it? Yes or no? You know, and then the audience would press a button, yes or no. And then literally he'd be like, okay, let's do it. So pray the first, oh, it's like a virgin oh is it you know as it got literally to the end you'd be like oh my god is this person going to do it or not or it'd be something like random like this person can bounce over 10 houses you know you could literally do anything you bet could you and it got to the point where if they had to get say 10 and they got nine you'd just sit around the telly and be like do you think he's going to do it no nah, he's not going to do it Shit, nah, nah, nah. you know because you just yeah, that's yeah. the thing with game shows isn't it you just then end up you interact with your family. Do you know what I mean? Whoever's watching it, yeah, you can't yeah. help it. Yeah. We had some shows called The Gong Show. The Gong and Show? It was like, yeah, it'd be like these people with these talents and stuff. And these celebrities would take, they had like this big gong and they would like, you know, people would be rooting for them too. Like, you know, the audience would be like, no, no, no. And like, they'll have like a reality show. And then like, I mean, they have like a variety thing. Like they could be tap dancing or singing or whatever the case may be. And if they were lousy, they'd be like, they would hit the gong. Oh, that used so that to be- that was like thing. an old version of America's Got Talent, right? Or Britain's Got Talent. You know what? You know. Yeah. yeah. There's Simon Cow the mogul. Now you got now the little like, X now. Simon Cowell making out that that was his idea when actually it come from a gong. 
Who mm-hmm. knew? But still, he oh, made money fun. from it. But then, okay. my fa- what was your favorite uh, game show? Do you know what? It still is my favorite game show, and it's called Catchphrase. Do you have that? Yeah. Say what you see, see what you say. Oh, my God. I love it. I'm so good. Basically, this little cartoony, robot thing called Chip comes out, and I don't know. Is it still on, is it still on TV? Because I don't think it's still on TV here. It's still on TV here, but somebody else um, does it now. Stephen Mulhern. It's on a Sunday now. Alfie likes to watch it, too. But I, <laughs> I would love to go on there because I always get them right. I wrote a love catchphrase. You can win fifty thousand pound. Woohoo! I'm gonna tell you, my favorite show was Pressure Luck, and because it had this little square thing, and it had these little whammy things on it, it was like these little cartoon things, mm-hmm. and you'd be like, no whammy, no whammy, no, and you would press it, and then it would go around, and you would win whatever your light lands on, but if you landed on one of them whammies, ah. Oh, you go down to zero and then this little whammy character comes out oh, and acts a fool, but it's like animated. So you don't, I don't think you actually see that. I think they show it on the screen, but mm. if you're watching it, it's like right in front of them. Oh my God, it was hilarious. I used to, I'd be like, no whammy, no whammy, whammy. And I'd be like, oh, I'm all in that. And they made a new version of it, but I'd never even seen it. I don't even know what, because I work nights now. So I don't even know if it comes on at night. We had a lot of nighttime game shows we had one on a saturday called generation game um where basically two family members say like you and your husband or you and your mom or you and your sister or whatever you'd go in there and play as teams and they'd do different things say like um an artist would go on and like say this is the painting i've done on you need to recreate it but say i would be blindfolded and then the hands of like the other person would have to do it like or tell you where to go, you know, and it just ended up a big mess. But the, at the end, they'd always have this one where it was a memory thing. So they'd have a conveyor belt and they'd be like, you have to remember whatever you remember on the conveyor belt, basically you can win. So they'd be like, oh, and it was only on for like 20 seconds. So the thing would be going along. Oh, there's a microwave, there's a book, there's a holiday, there's a car, there's this. And every time they'd be, there's a teddy bear. And there'd be a massive, like, human-sized bear sat on the thing. You know, that was the trademark, the bear. And then when they, when they were like, okay, you've literally got, like, 40 seconds to remember as many things, everyone would be saying, cuddly toy, cuddly toy, you know, because everyone would remember the bear. I wanted one of them bears. That sounded That sounded like a whole lot of fun. <laughs> so to be fair, when you're 10 years old and you want to you, stay up on a Saturday night, it was fun. I'm going to tell you there's what, maybe four, I think there's like three or four, no, no, maybe four or five game shows that are still rocking to this day. You're going to say Wheel of Fortune. Wheel of Fortune, Price is Right with Family Bob Fortune. Well, I think yours is called something different, ain't it? You know, where they press the button in the middle, there's two, there's a family two families, like five people. Are oh, you talking about Family Feud? Yeah, we call it Family Fortune. <coughs> yeah, that's Family Feud. And I'm gonna tell you right now, I'm not a big, I, I liked, um, I can't even think of his name, but he used to, he used to always kiss on all the women when he was, when he was the, uh, the host. Now we got Steve Harvey as the host of Family Feud. And to be honest, some people think he's funny. I. I really don't. I don't think it's funny when you clown a person for really thinking of the answer and it'd be corny. Now, I find it funny when the family's like, you know, they might say a wrong answer or a silly answer, but that don't mean you turn around and just rag on them for it. I mean, he be going in. He spends like 10, 10, 15 minutes ragging on the family. I'm like, dude, it's bad enough they losing. Why are you going to keep <laughs> ragging on them? Like, you know what I mean? Now, we all know they get ready to get that third X and mm-hmm. it's going to go to the next team. So why spend 10 minutes on ragging on them? Because they, you know, that person. When, you, ain't would got you, a when clue. you were younger, did you ever just shout the answers at the telly and be like, oh my God, the answers, blah, blah? And you'd be shouting it and they either wouldn't get it and they'd get it wrong. Or you'd be like, oh my God, I told you. Or I do that. I do that now with Family Feud. Me too, me too, but I didn't want to say that. I do that now with Family Feud. I do that with Jeopardy. Now, I'm going to tell you, Alex Trebek just died. 
he's been the host of Jeopardy forever and a day. And now they're trying to get this guy who's the most winningest contestant on Jeopardy to take his place. I don't think anybody can take Alec Trebek's place. Like he was the man. Mm -hmm. And then I heard he did like 10 episodes right up to when he died, right before he died. And so they're gonna air those. I think they're gonna air all the way to like the 1st of January or something like that. And then there's gonna be a new host. But I'm gonna tell you, Jeopardy was one of those games where like, if you didn't know the topic, don't even, don't even think about it. But I used to always get like the cartoon topic or they would have like some random ones that you knew you knew. And they'd be like, I'd be like, what is Buster Rhymes? <laughs> I tell you, you know, what, like you like saying you still do that now. I'm mm -hmm. really sad. Like now, like Alfie likes to watch game shows because he likes to do the nut, like, you know, they count up or count down. He likes to do the numbers. So in the afternoon here, we have one called Tipping Point, which is on four till five, and then five till six is the chase. Um, and I'm not gonna lie. Obviously, it's on, so I'm listening to it. I like to think, let me see how brainy I am. Let me see if that was my turn, how many would I get right in a row? So I'm like, okay, yeah, I'm doing good. I'm up to £3,000. Then you get one wrong, and I'm like, oh, forget it. I can't be bothered anymore. But I still do that now. If that was me, how many would I get right? Yeah. Now, because uh, you got the prices right. Yeah, we had that. Then you got... Uh, Wheel of Fortune, and I'm gonna tell you, I'm a terrible speller. So Wheel and Fortune, I really wasn't good with. Cause, and then I'll be the type of guy, you know, Vanna White used to just flip the numbers. Now she just pushes a button, which is kind of dope. Mm. And, um, but the thing about it is I'd be that contestant that would use all my money and then buy a vow and then Still half the, the answer. It. <laughs> yeah, I'm one of them people that I gotta have like, damn, there are all the letters up there before I say anything. I'm, I'm pushing my luck. See, I'm, now, I'm totally the opposite. There'd be like one letter up there and I'd be like, I wanna guess it's this. And they'd be like, no, you know, because I'm thinking I need to make the most of this money, right? So I want the most I can get. I've got one letter, right, I wanna guess. And see, I'll be the man that just be pressing my luck, be like, spin that wheel and then as soon as it hit bankrupt i'll be over there before they pan on me after they pan on me like this after they pan on me, <laughs> i want to quit <laughs> i don't want to play anymore we, we did have a game show here called strike it lucky where they would start at one end and go like up some stairs down the other side and basically it was cards so say they turn over a card and it was um the 10 of spades they'd have to say, do you want to go higher or lower? You know, so is the next card going to be higher or lower? And you'd just be saying higher, higher, you know, at the screen. Um, and then obviously if they get it wrong, they're out, you know, but honest to God, these game shows had some absolutely banging prizes, man. I just wanted to go on there to see- I'll tell you right now, you know, the dopest show is, is to me, the price is right. Cause I just want to, I just want to- That's when they say it. higher or lower, right? about the price yeah some and some some of the some of the <laughs> games are yeah but you know they're they got classic games like plinko blinko where you drop the little things down oh yeah yeah oh like, i love it, that yeah. and then uh and but then i'm gonna tell you right now i just want to spin the wheel at the end you just spin that joint mm -hmm. i'll just be like man they had this one old lady man she almost broke a hip trying to spin that bad boy she was like yeah <laughs> that's all i want to do on price is right but i'm gonna tell you right now i liked it when bob barker was the show host though i mean drew carey right now is the man but bob i barker. think like when we had game shows back in the day they always had the same host they were on for years right always had the same host and then it will either go off air for a little while and then they'll bring it back like catchphrase had roy walker for as long as you can remember irish dude and that was the show you know then I, I don't know if he passed away or what happened, but the show went off air. And then years later, oh, it's come back. Stephen Mulhern's going to be the host. It ain't the same. Bring back Roy Walker, you know, and if he's not the same, cut it off air. Why try and, you know, recreate something, I think? No. Did y'all have the dating game? We had um, Blind Date. That's where three people would come out and there's a, there's, um, a partition and the other person has got asked them free questions and then yeah, that's, that's about the, it. the same the date what's yours a dating game 
That's what it was called, the dating. Oh, ours was called Blind Date. And even that, there was a- They had Michael Jackson on Dating Game. That's how old Dating Game is. They don't have it on anymore. Well, they had a chick called Scylla Black. She done it for years. Like, she was from Liverpool, had big old goofy teeth, bright red hair. But she was a character, right? That was the show. But the same thing happened. Well, has she passed away? Oh, God, I think she has. She has. Sorry, Scylla. Um, But- they, they obviously it's all fair for years. All of a sudden, Paul O'Grady, they did it with him. It was our flop, big flop, flop, flop. Now they got a show called Let's Make a Deal. You ever watch that game? Did y'all have that game show? We had one called Deal or No Deal, where yeah. there was well, bo- that's that's that boxes newer. and you had to open it. Yeah, that's a um. That's a newer game show. That's like current game show. Like, oh, we don't have it anymore. It was on for years, but it's not on now. Like 10 years it was on and now nothing. Yeah, it's not on anymore here. But Who Wants to Be a Millionaire used to be my joint too. Really? Yeah, we still have that here. It used to be Chris Tarrant and now they've changed it to Jeremy Clarkson, which I don't think is the same still, but. Yeah, well, I, I, like, I don't think they have it on anymore, but man. That used to be the show for me. I'd be like, man, get all the way up there. And then they'd be like, I'd be like, yo, can I call somebody? The first person I'd probably call is my dad. I'd be like, yo, pop. <laughs> well, I hope you would talk quicker game. than that because you've only got 60 seconds. I know. I'd be like, hurry up, dad. I got this question. Are you watching? And he'd be like, go ahead, boy. <laughs> my, dad, my dad would be talking to me like <laughs> like like we talk on the phone right now he'd be like go ahead boy what's the what's the question <laughs> <laughs> that was another one of them shows where i'd always see right how far am i gonna get before i got one wrong and lost all my money yeah and then you had um now this is kind of like in the early 90s it was called change of heart and what they did was there was a couple and they would go out and have dates with single people. Like they would go out on a date. They are they, a couple, are you together? Yeah, are you together? And then they would go out on a date with someone else and they would talk about like their current relationship and, you know, stuff like that. And then they would come back on the show. Like you would see it, like say like, uh, you were dating somebody and then like you would actually be sitting next to the host and they you could be watching okay so let's say let's let me get this right say me and you we're a couple and we're dating we're gonna go on the show and then we're gonna go on dates with other people yeah but then at the end you either like you either like both of you have these cards on your lap now you can either <coughs> oh, stick or twist what Stick or twist, like I stick with you or I twist and I go with someone else. Is that what yeah. you're saying? Or you have, or you have a, you stay together or you have a change of heart and you end up going with that other person. But I was wouldn't, like, you cla- oh. wouldn't you class that more as a reality show? Because it's not really a game show, is it? What do they win? If I said, okay, I want to stick with him and you say you want to stick with me, what do we win? Nothing. Just that, you in a relationship. keep that relationship. That's the, that's the prize. And then they probably let you go on another, they probably pay for the dinner date or whatever that y'all go on. I, okay. I do you know. have, um, oh man. To me, that's risky. Cause say if, say, if, say if we're, or, or we're on a bad patch and the next year, you know, I'm on a date with a Fox and you're on a date with like a hunk. Vin and Diesel, that's yeah. what, I ain't want to be with you anyway. Exactly. You're making a split. You're making a decision in a split second that will affect the rest of your life. Um, Guess who was on it, though? The game. Really? Did he stick <laughs> or twist? Oh, I couldn't remember, but he was on it, though. Babe, you can't come on here and tell half a story. Well, I don't remember. I don't. It's it's like an early '90s show. <laughs> Before okay, well, the game was like famous. There's a show on here, and I you saying that I'm really, really racking my brain to remember what it's called. But basically, there's like 30 women in the studio, right? And there's a lift in the middle, and a guy comes down. They've got lights, so basically, it's very superficial. It's with Paddy McGuinness, who's very funny. So the guy comes down. Huh? It sounds like The Bachelor. <laughs> Well, no, because they move into the house with him. But anyway, so what happens is the guy comes down the lift 
And if, they, if you don't find him attractive, you turn off your light. Basically, he says, no likey, no lighty, right? So if you, don't, <laughs> if you don't like him, you turn off your light. So then it, say, I don't know, 10 women have turned their lights off. So he's got 20 women left. Then they'll play a, like a, a clip of him telling you what he does, basically trying to sell himself. At that point, if you've changed your mind, you still don't like him, turn the light off. So then basically, however many lights he's got left at the end, he asks, he's got to then turn the lights off till he gets it down to two chicks, right? And then um, he has to ask them a question. So he might say, give me your best impression of barking like a dog, you know? And then like he's random, he could ask him anything or Can show me your best that? impression of you twerking, you know? So then after that, he picks one. Then when he picks one, they go on a holiday. Um, they go to... Um, Fernando's right island of Fernando's and then the following week you will see their trip on whether they got on or not and whether they're going to stay together or whether they argued or whatever happened and that show was called uh lighty likey or lighty no he used to say if you don't basically if you don't like them turn your light off so he'd say no likey no lighty but I can't remember what it was called no likey no lighty I've got a, I've got a, I've got to google it sorry yeah, because that sounds like a generic version of the bad. Take me out. It was called Take Me Out. Well, I'm gonna tell you right now. I probably watched that before I watched The Bachelor and The Bachelorette. Those yeah, but The Bachelor isn't that one disgusting. one dude lives in a house with however many chicks, takes them out on dates and blah blah. Again, I'd say that's a reality show, not a game show. I know, but I'm just saying. I I know. I don't want to change the subject, but that. Add The Bachelor to our Fun Day Friday when we talk about reality shows because we got a whole heap of that program. Yeah, here. but then um, there was this $100,000 pyramid. Did y'all have that? Mm-mm. That was dope. Like you paired up with like a celebrity, like say like me as a celebrity. I'm and I oh, and I'm, I'm just the Joe Blogs off the street. I'm going to pair up with the celebrity. Okay, let's go celebrity. And then you had these questions, that, but you couldn't say the word. You had to say, like, almost like taboo. Oh, like the board game? You know, like taboo? Yeah, the, the game where, like, it say it, you could say uh, Tiger Woods, but you couldn't say golf. golf. Or, yeah, okay. So it was like that until you got to, like, <clears throat> oh, man, that used to be the joint. That used I'll, tell, be- I'll tell you what show you do have there. And I'm not going to front, I only watched it for the presenter. And you're going to tell me he didn't present it the whole time. I can't even remember the name of it, but Ludacris was the presenter. And that to do... Fear Factor. <sighs> Luda, Paul, oof. I'm going to tell you right now, Paul Rogan did that first. And I'm going to tell you, when Paul Rogan did it's it, much better. it was the joint. Like I just said, I am watching it for the show. I'm watching it for the host. Fear is not a factor. I am fearing ludicrous. Don't worry about that. But now, let me tell you something, though. They had a celebrity one. Mm-hmm. And John Travolta's wife, who just passed away not too long ago, they did a they had a fear factor for, um, you know, they when the celebrities do it, they always do it for like a charity. <clears throat> well, they had this taxi cab up in the air and they wanted them to get inside the taxi cab and you had to grab all these flags off the cab. Mm hmm. Now, I've never seen this. John DeVoter pulled up in a limo and said, "Uh uh-uh, you come down from there. I was like, yo. So she didn't do it? John DeVoter. No, she didn't do it. She was like, John. He was like, "Uh uh-uh, you ain't doing that. No, you're not. Do you think that was set up, though? I don't think so, because he had a serious look on his face. He was eggy? Huh? He was eggy? Oh, man. He looked like, he was like, "Uh uh-uh, my wife ain't doing that. He was like, I will double. He says, I will, I will, I will triple, you know, I would double whatever her charity My is, but she ain't doing that. And she jumped right in that limo and was gone. See, I was like, I'm going to tell you this much then. Now huh? you told that story, I'm going to remember that. So if ever me and you appear on a game show um, to win money for charity, because obviously we're celebrities, I'm going to expect the same uh, respect from you in return as John gave uh, his his wife. And I'm not your wife, but you're my ride or die. So if it means I've got to get up in a taxi, I expect to see you pulling up and being like, oh, hell no. She uh-uh. doing that. If, I pull, if I pull up, I'm going to be like, go ahead, girl, you can do it. <laughs> I'll be like, uh-uh, I'm watching you do that. Oh, man. What? 
And when, when our show come back on, I'll be like, how many people seen so climb all over that taxi in midair? Oh my God, wasn't it a sight to see? Mm -mm. I'll be like, I ain't doubling my money. You going, you signed up for it. I know you signed that release form. Go on up there, girl. I'll be there. I'll be your biggest cheerleader. That's what's going to happen. So you wouldn't even say, calm down and I'm going to take your place? Mm-mm, because -mm, I'm afraid of heights. I ain't taking <laughs> Mm -mm. Well, great like flipping co-host you are. Maybe I should have done a tick list and asked questions before we started. I'll be like this, though. I will be your, I'll be your biggest fan because I'll be right here like this. Go, go. Get that one off the hood. Hurry up, hurry up. I like to think you'd be shouting a bit louder than that. <laughs> well, yeah, I'm going to shout way louder than that. I might have a bullhorn. And right you know there. what? I'm even going to do it. We would be there as a team. I'm going to take one for the team. I'm grabbing them flags in that taxi now, and I'm getting that right money. Now, though. I'm gonna tell you right now, one of my favorite game. I don't know if it's a real, but no, it's a game show. Amazing Race. Ah. Oh, Amazing Grace. It. Amazing Race. Oh, Amazing Race. Oh, I love that show. You have like say, say me and you, and like you would like they would have us racing all over the world, and like you would get these little. Well, I wouldn't say all over the world, but they get these little. Like say like you go to like, uh, I can't think of it. Um, Cause they ain't on TV anymore. But anyway, say like we're in Italy and you have to get all these clues, but you have to work together and then you have to beat the other groups. Oh man, I love that. But we, Cause I would be the muscle. And then, you know, we I'd both be the brains. brains, but I'd be the muscle. Cause you know, you got to carry all your stuff. Oh, it's, it's dope. Okay, I think maybe we need to investigate, like, is there any way that we can do this somehow and go on a game show? You be like the muscle and I can just be like in your ear telling you stuff because- No, no, we, no, uh, 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 we work together, it's called amazing. We are working game. together, but I'm gonna yeah. be guiding you, you know, like, because you have got to be, views. So I'm- gonna be right there with me. Exactly, like can, that's what I'm saying. Let's investigate this and see if we can get our backsides on a game show. I can see it. I can see it right now. We'd be like in third, fourth place because I can see it right now. We arguing right now. We ain't even got on the game show yet. <laughs> they be like, Rich and Soph, they have a they have a talk show. They are successful. And guess what? They are sucking at Amazing Race. They are like in third, fourth place. And then towards no the end. No way. You don't and then ever towards the end, you start, listen. if you're like the last person, like at towards the end, if you're towards, the, if you're like the last group, you kind of like kicked off the show. You don't, you don't, you are not a quitter. I know that about you for a fact. There's no way we'd be third or fourth place. Even if we had a couple of bickering bits, we're at the top first spot. Bam, oh yeah. Uh, one thing about it, I'm very competitive, but Amazing Race is one of those shows where I would love to be on. I'll tell you another show I just thought about that I really liked. It used to be on, I think it was like in the evenings at like five, six o'clock, The Crystal Maze. Did you have that? No. What is that? Oh, so like there'd be a team Crystal of Maze. like five Did people. You say Crystal Meth. No. <laughs> Stop downgrading our show. We talk of that sort of stuff. Um, so basically, they'd pick um, a theme like Aztec or something like that, and then one they pick one person to go into the room, and basically they'd be like some sort of assault. There'd be a tiny crystal in a, like a glass cabinet on the other side, and there'd be like three ropes. One would be dodgy, you know. You'd have to work out basically how to get from one side of the room to the other without, say, touching the floor, and you'd have to get that crystal and bring it back within like two minutes or three minutes, depending on how difficult it was. And then right at the end. There was a massive crystal like that they'd get in um and air would blow these tickets up from the bottom and they'd have to to collect as many tickets as possible because that would resort to money so people were always stuffing it in their clothes catching all the tickets so it was amazing That's you so can actually do that like they've got some mock That's one so set up like so much fun that does. i'm gonna tell you right now though did y'all have double dare Double Dare. Don't think that was so. a teenage, that was like a teeny bopper show, like little kids. Oh my God. And then you used to get slimed at the end. Oh. We, Green we did shit have, just we did fall have on. Teeny bop ones called, there was one called Fun House with Pat Sharp. My mom actually liked that one. Um, but yeah, they had a little gunge in there. And then they had a, um, 
Oh, now I did watch this a lot. Hollywood Squares. Did y'all have that? They had all these celebrities in these squares like tic-tac-toe. What do y'all call it? Knobs, knobs and knobs or knobs and crosses. Knots and crosses. What's it called? Knobs and crosses. No, knots. Knots and crosses. Knots and crosses. And it was like <laughs> celebrities and like you would pick different celebrities and they'd give you a question. Oh no, they'd give you a question and you would you would pick a celebrity to answer. Well, the celebrities like on a wall in blocks lit up and then their light would go yeah. out. Yeah, we got something like that. Don't ask me what it's called. I ain't got a Scooby. It's called knobs and crosses. It's not called knobs and crosses. That's a bloody paper game. But no, that's what Hollywood squares were. It was knobs and crosses, but the celebrities were in the squares. And then if you say like they give you a question and then you would pick the celebrity and see if they had the right answer. And if you believe mm -hmm. them, then you would get a circle. Yeah, we did have the same thing, but X. I can't. Sorry for the viewers that are probably doing what I said I do at game shows and shouting at the screen. It's cool, blah, blah, blah. I can't remember what it's called. Mm -hmm. And I loved it because Whoopi was on there. She always played the center square. <laughs> Do you know she's got no eyebrows? <laughs> that's a that's a um unuseful fact that I I know. <laughs> I don't care if that woman ain't got no eyebrows. I'm just telling you, that's a useless bit of information that's stored up in my brain. Hey, Whoopi, you ain't got no eyebrows. Hey, she still looks good with no brows. I ain't hating. I guess I ain't really looked at her face in a while. Listen, so I, I if know. you if you're on a, if you're watching a, if you're on a game show one day and they say which celebrity actress female has got no eyebrows you're going to remember the answer now because i've given it to you you'll be grateful what if it that was one somebody day? that had alopecia and they, they don't have any hair at all okay the question would be the actress that was in ghost that has got no eyebrows you know the answer because i told you you like drew barrymore <laughs> drew barrymore one in ghost demi moore was in ghost. oh my god i can't believe the movie buff just I confused I drew it. barrymore I I fixed it though. You didn't. Yes, I did. How could you get them two mixed up? I said Demi Moore. The girl from ET getting mixed up with the chick who got her kit off in a strip movie. How do you get them mixed up? Strip tease. Mm. This is another Janet Paula situation gonna start. No, it's in. not. No, it's not. You ain't gonna. Uh -uh. Barry you ain't gonna this up on me. Oh Tom my God. Selleck. Demi Moore. I ain't a massive fan of yours, but I'm so sorry about that. Hold up, no, sorry, Tom Selleck, that's all I got to say about that. Yeah, but at least they did a film together. <laughs> <laughs> Drew no, but that was me. Me more. I just want to let you know that was me. Back on the topic here. Back, bring it back. Um, bring it back for the last few minutes. So I know you always come with a list, whereas I just wing it and do it off the top of my head. You literally come with a list. If you've you've exhausted your list, you've got no more. What? Have you ran out of them? Or have you got any more game shows? Okay, so thanks for coming today. This has been great. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm trying to think of a game show that was dope back in the day. Oh, oh. Name that tune. And I was getting ready to say that when you were talking about um I couldn't think of it. And now I did when you were talking about, I think you said catchphrase. I'd be good at name tunes. I, I, well, actually, no, I wouldn't. I could oh, sing would. song words. I just don't know who sings it or what it's called. That's where we would make the bomb of a team. I'm telling you. You know who Jamie Foxx got that with his daughter, Shazam. It's the same thing. His daughter's called Shazam? No, they have a, a song game show called shazam okay i was gonna say you know on shazam where you know the app shazam yeah, where you, like you, yeah, you hold your phone up and it tells you the song yeah and that's what that is it's, it's pretty much the same thing but they'll give you it's almost it's almost like name that tune where you um you'll play um they'll play a certain snippet of a song and you have to figure it out before shazam does okay See, now, do you know what's you know what just I mean? coming to my brain? Obviously, I've admitted I'm winging it, but why is it mainly men that um, are the hosts on game shows? Well, that's not necessarily true because is he? early on, let's make a... No, who wants to be a millionaire? She was a female host. 
Oh, we haven't had a woman host it. We've had two dudes. No, we had a woman host it. And then, we hardly got any women on And there. then they had a new version of Pressure Luck. No whammy, no whammy, no. She's a female. She's an actress. I think reality TV shows seem to be more women presenters and hosts, but game shows here are mainly men. Mm-hmm. I'd say 80% are men, if not 90. In rea- I'm telling you right now, um, Big Brother, do you consider that a game show? No, nah, reality show. So curb reality that one. Show? We did used to have one called... Um, the weakest link with this yeah yeah we had that too did you have it with Anne whatever her name is um the woman with glasses yeah you had it with the English chick I don't know if she was English probably so you are the weakest link goodbye who me (laughs) oh yeah yeah she was a bit annoying though but see then you know what Alec Baldwin had a game called the match game. Did you ever watch that? No. Where you would have like they would give you um <coughs> excuse me. Um <clears throat> they would give you questions and you would ask celebrities in these little panels. And if you were right, you match their, you know what I mean? Like their answer, then you would mm-hmm. win. And then whoever had the most matches. Kind Do you of know game out. shows that I don't like are ones where you literally win nothing <laughs> like we got one at the minute called tipping point which i did actually apply to go on and they called me right well, i'll tell you about that in a minute but um basically there's like four people and in the first round then it goes down to three then it goes down to two then the one person at the end gets a chance to win the money but when them three people are knocked out it's just all right mate ta-da, off you go you don't even get nothing not even your bus fare home just off you go you've Thanks for wasting your time. You've got nothing. They could at least give you a T-shirt or even a mug. Thanks for coming. You've got an across the pond mug. Ta-da. I'm going to tell you right now, the things that frustrate me in game shows is like, say like you be up to like, maybe like, maybe two or $3,000. And then they'll mm-hmm. ask you like, do you want to just take this and mm-hmm. go? Or do you want to like keep going? Risk it. And I'll be like, you Would came you here. With, you came here with five dollars. Look, I ain't picky. Three thousand. Thank you. Oh, so you take the money every time. You're not risking it for a biscuit. <sighs> nope. Because just my luck. Soon you get as, wrong, soon yeah. With a hard question, and next you know, you go home with nothing. See, the you, funny thing, we got one here called the Chase, and my old man wants to go on the Chase. My dad, and basically, they give you. Let's say. It's like a quick fire round, 60 seconds. They ask you a question. Each question you get right is worth a thousand pounds, right? So then when you face the chaser, the quiz person, they give you a lower offer. So, okay, well, um, you won 5,000 pounds, which means you've got to ask five questions to make sure that money's safe. Or I can give you just 1,000 pounds, which means you only have to answer three questions. Or I can give you 50,000 pounds, but you have to answer six questions, right? My old man's like, I'm going big every time. I went with nothing, sod it, I'm going big. But don't you think oh, no. something is better I'm than on, nothing? I'm so even if roll, you come away. If I'm on a roll and it's up there past what I what I came with, mm. I'm, I'm out, tap me out. That's probably, that's probably why I ain't on no game shows. I'll tell you right now, <laughs> the first thing I'll be thinking about is debt. And I'll just be like, <laughs> 5,000? Oh shoot, I can take up, co- oh. Oh, oh, 20,000. <laughs> I want that. Yeah, take taxes off top. I want that. Well, mm-hmm. I did, well, I did say I applied for the show and I did, but I did also apply for another show called The Apprentice. And you had that there when your mate Donald Trump used to do it, right? Business one. But that's a reality TV show. So that's another subject. Uh, that's another show. So that's. Uh, yeah there's another yeah we have to talk about reality shows because i did apply for one and my dad was like "Uh uh-uh the answer is no which one did you apply (laughs) for not big brother i was like dad can i i got the application and everything no was it big brother no it was real world the very first episode oh my god stop don't tell us anymore that's another show reality tv Any more game shows you want to get before we kick, get kicked out? We're getting kicked out. 
before before people be like, oh my God, you forgot this show. Do you know what? People probably are going to say that, and I'm glad, because there's only so much you can squeeze in an hour, let's be fair. We've already got shows backed up to do parts two, parts three, um, and it's only because I'm so anal, I don't like to do the same topic twice in a week, that we haven't done any part two yet. <laughs> The OCD, are. OCD. Let's keep it. Variety okay. is the spice of life. Well, yes. Well, check this out, people. That was fun. Yeah, I love a good game show. Sunday, you, serious Sunday is just around the corner. I know, serious Sunday. And this is, is the thing: so, serious Sunday ain't even here yet. But I know there's going to be a part two and a part three to that one. <laughs> <laughs> We're going big or you going home on Sunday. You heard it here first. Yes. Batten down the hatches because it is going to get Batten deep. Yeah, I still watch prices right, though. Their, their, their prices, I mean, their we, prizes be dope. We don't have that on there anymore. I love it. Gonna, All right, people. I'm going to hold on before you go. I'm going to find a YouTube clip of Bullseye and send it to you. I don't want to see it. Bullies in the corner. <laughs> <laughs> it's the ball. I'm not Based saying balls. Listen, let's clear this up. It's not balls. B A W L. It's B U. You know, like a bull with horns. Not balls. Bull. Bullseye. Like in the center of a dartboard. Bullseye. I heard you. I heard you. Just loud clearing that up. And clear. I heard you loud and clear. Um. Rich, still no. have a lovely weekend. Yes, you have a lovely weekend too, so um, hopefully it don't, we're supposed to be getting possibly a 50% chance of snow on Sunday. Well, you can tell us on Sunday when we when we chime back in, Diddy. Place That's your bets it's now. It's Let's it's start our own game show. Place your bets now. Will he or will he not get snow up on Sunday? What do you think? Are you going to, what's your answer, Rich? Yes or no? Are you betting yes or no? I, I ain't even, I ain't, cause I'm terrible at betting. So no, I'm gonna say, I don't know. Oh my God, you would. I'm a terrible gambler. We have casinos here. And but I there's no crazy. money involved. It's just a sportsman's bet. Do you think you're gonna get snow on Sunday? Yes or no? Yes. Oh, that, was, <laughs> yes. that was hard work. Yes. All right, people. This is Soph. This is Rich. <laughs> and we are from across the pond. We are across you the guys pond. Guys, have a good weekend. Have a good weekend. See if you get snow on Sunday. Peace out. Peace out. A town.